Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a new episode. Uh, this week I'm going to continue with my science fiction terrain for the new game Stargrave. Uh, this video is not going to be really long because this is not a super complicated project. It is for the third scenario called Steam Vents of the Undercity and it's going to involve making uh, six steam vents Plus, it calls for a special effect of steam that will come out of random uh, steam pipes and they will obstruct uh, vision for anyone who is within it. And I believe the rule also says if a miniature is within a certain distance of the steam vent, there's a risk of getting hurt, injured. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my steam vents and I'm also going to show you my solution which isn't really my solution, I've seen it done elsewhere, for um, making the steam so that it does not interfere with my uh, view or my opponent's view of the play area. Let's get to the tabletop and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This scenario calls for six steam vents. Now the rules say that they're supposed to be square in shape, but for me, steam vents uh, really should be round. So what I did was, um, again, with science fiction terrain, you can always make it by hand. You can make it out of foam, out of chipboard, or whatever materials you have. But for me, science fiction terrain tends to look best when it's a little more perfect than what fantasy terrain does. So what I did was I went to the hardware store and went down some of the uh, the aisles looking for something that said steam vent to me. And I'm going to throw up a picture real quick of what these originally look like. They're gray in color. I don't know the name. I will try to find them out. But here they are primed in black. And let me just tell you, they're, they're, uh, they have a thread on one half. On this back half right here, they're threaded. And over here, they're smooth. So obviously, it's some kind of uh, nozzle or coupling for matching um, maybe PVC that has threads on one side and the PVC goes in on the other. But they're one and a half inch uh, diameter, I believe. They may be one and a quarter, but I think they're one and a half inch. And I got six of them, primed them black. And these are going to be my steam vents. Now, in the uh, description, it says that they will be um, in a circle. And uh, I don't believe it tells you. It says that um, you need to place them so they are six to eight inches away from the center. So you would measure and just sort of space them out. And the reason for that eight inches is because when the game starts, two of these are going to be, uh, they're going to have steam surrounding them for eight inches, and then at various points in the game, you'll roll to see if a random, well, not if, but when a, 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 another steam plume appears and which one, uh, which one it will appear in. Um, so again, you can go to the hardware store and find anything like this that's really cheap. These were 83 cents each, I believe. Ah, they may have been cheaper than that. I may have gotten them less than that. But they, they definitely were under a dollar each. So I spent $6 on these. I already had the paint and primed them up. So nothing really complicated there. Now, by themselves, they could function just fine. Just drop them on the table. There's a steam vent. But I wanted to go with something that was visual on the inside. And you could do this with... Um, you could do this with chipboard, but I'm going to cut away to a short video here and show you how I used Inkscape to design a, a circle that will be dropped in here, and then I cut it out with a laser cutter. Now again, I know not everybody has access to a laser cutter, but again, what you're going to see here could easily be done with chipboard and a hole punch. I just used a laser cutter because it allows me to be precise and also have everything look uniform. Let's take a look at that video real quick, and then I'll come back to the table. I started by uh, drawing a one and a half inch circle in Inkscape. Then I draw, drew some smaller circles and lined them up horizontally and vertically and shrunk them down to fit inside this. I gave it a ring around just for a little extra detail and removed some corner circles. And then I made copies of it, six in all. And then I took this file to my laser cutter, as you can see here. That, that initial line is the score, and then that second line is the cut. And here you can see it cutting out the little small circles and then the bigger circle right there. All right, next thing I'm going to do is hit these with a little bit of, uh, this is brushed dark gray metallic. Uh, these are flat matte black. So uh, I'm going to just squeeze some of this out here. And what I'm going to do is, 
uh, you can do this a lot of different ways. I'm going to use a uh, sponge. Um, I've been doing this lately because I like the uh, I like the effect it gives. It, it gives almost a texture. And what I'm doing is I'm tapping various parts of the um, of this of the uh, pipe here and leaving behind just a little bit of the the metallic. Command received. Activating. All right, so here are the silver pieces. I painted the wood silver, and then I laser cut them uh, in the video you just saw. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a bead of hot glue down here on the left and on the right. And I'm just gonna drop in, drop this in and try to make it to where it, you know, locks in the center, just like that. You know, you don't have to go crazy. This shows you that for, for very inex inexpensive, less than $6, and some maybe some chipboard, you could create six vents. And these will work on any science fiction game. I mean, I'm going to use them in this scenario, but, but when you're designing a tabletop for a sci-fi setting, this definitely is, uh, is something you could use. So nothing really crazy here. Absolutely, this is something you can do. Now... In the game, you start out with these all eight inches from the center, and two of them start with a random eight-inch plume of steam uh, around them. You, you, I guess you can number them, roll a d6, and pick one, uh, you know, or pick two. And then at the start of each turn, you roll to you roll for another vent of steam to to go, and you do a random roll. And if you roll one that's already got it, you just re-roll again until you get one. And then at the end of each turn you roll a d20. For each steam, you roll one d20, and on a roll of 12 or higher, that steam disappears. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take you to a quick video where I show you how I made a steam plume in Inkscape. I, uh, I made it in Inkscape, printed it out on cardstock in color, and then uh, I laminated it. So let me show you those videos, and then I'm gonna show you the, the steam uh, pieces in play on the tabletop. For the steam, I drew an 8-inch circle uh, diameter, and then I grabbed some uh, graphics off the internet that looked like steam. I made three different sizes, an outer ring, a middle ring, and then a smaller ring, and I just shrunk these down to fit in that 8-inch circle, saved as a, as a PDF, and then took it to the print shop, got some color copies made, uh, so and then I went and laminated it. I will make this um, this PDF image of the... Uh, steam available in the description below. You can download it and go print it out yourself and laminate it if you like. All right, so let's talk about the steam. So here is one of them laminated. It's white on one side. There's the steam steam thing. Now the rules state that you should place it over, <laughs> over the vent. And it's supposed to be eight inches. Now, let me tell you, even whether you use something flat or maybe you use some cotton that's been like glued and, and it has you know fire effect applied to it, and there's plenty of videos out there that'll show you how to do that. The problem is if you place it over the steam vent, um, you can't see under it. So if you have a miniature down here, it's kind of kind of not really a good solution, at least in my opinion. Instead, what I plan on doing is when a vent becomes active and the steam comes out. I'm going to drop this down and just place the vent on top of it like that. Six very easy, very inexpensive steam vents for the third scenario of the new Stargrave game or just scatter terrain for any science fiction tabletop game uh, made out of some sort of connector that I got at the hardware store for less than a dollar, this little piece right here. And then, of course, the steam, which I designed in, in Inkscape. I found some graphics online. Uh, imported it, did some manipulation to make it look like it was coming out of a center hole, 
and then uh, laminate it, and there you go. By the way, I will make this PDF available as a free download. Check the description below, and there'll be a link where you can download this if you want it, and you can go print it out yourself in color, laminate it if you want, and you'll have you'll have a, a steam uh, plume for your for your game. All right, what else? Let me please invite you and remind you about the Tabletop Crafters Guild. This is a Facebook group that I am one of the five guild masters. We, uh, we host this page for our fellow crafters who game and make terrain and build things, craft things for their table. And uh, you, come join us if you're not already a member. You're going to find like-minded individuals there. I also have my own Facebook group called the Tabletop Engineer. Uh, not as big but growing and uh, I use it mainly as a place to post random stuff videos crafts things that just don't make it into a video or over at the tabletop crafters guild um, I also do a lot of other things there I do uh, I've started doing a weekly Thursday live session where I talk about games and resources and videos and books and whatever else comes to my mind that I feel my fellow gamers might enjoy knowing about. All right, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I'll be back next Wednesday with a brand new video. Everybody, take care. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing.